right? And so once we build it, we then test it, and then we deploy it, and then we start saving money and generating more revenue. But we are doing it. You know, I'd like to just say a, uh, something here. Uh, we have to realize that uh, the city is not Google, and neither is the county. Uh, we do not have the kind of revenue raising capabilities as a Google or Facebook even, for that matter. We don't have it. We receive our funding from taxpayer dollars. No one wants their taxes raised. No one wants their property taxes raised. No one wants to raise their fees, fines, or any of that, right? So if we don't want those raised, what, do, what does that mean? We have the limited funding to be able to do the kind of changes expeditiously <laughs> that we need. So we have to work in line with, first of all, the funding that we're receiving, but yet we have to sit alongside of Google and everyone then goes to Facebook and the internet and, and they'll say, oh, you guys are not doing like all the new technology that's happening. Well, we don't have those kinds of, of funds. Also, recognize this, and, and I, I, I appreciate what Brenna uh, indicated. When we start a, a system, when we start a system implementation, starting with the RFP, et cetera, uh, we have so many governmental guidelines to follow just to get it out on the street, just to get it awarded. Many of you in here know about it. You know how long it takes for us to get that. By the time it's out on the streets, with our specs, and we review the, the bids and, and actually select the one, the technology has changed. <laughs> Technology has changed. Or in the middle of the implementation, there's something great out there. And what can you what what can you do other than finalize that project and then <laughs> figure out how to raise get get the better technology the next time, which you have to also get that funded. So it's it's a challenge, but we work within that challenge. You know, for instance, we have a, an electronic filing system talking about uh, rates and the, the the fact that people don't want to pay. We have a we have an e-filing system, and it's 295. We did an analysis across the country. Fees range from four dollars to twelve twelve dollars per filing. We were able to get our vendor down to 295. Well, the attorneys wanted e-filing. Now they're bickering about the 295. <laughs> they don't want to pay. So. <laughs> You, you have to, but, but you can't be discouraged. You have to keep trying to, you know, continue to work hard. And I want to make a, a, just one other uh, remark concerning the, the getting your departments to change. Because you can't just keep putting new technology on top of old processes. It's just as simple as that. I think that we all need a business process re-engineering department. focused on uh, re-engineering our business processes while we are putting in this technology. My background is, is I, I came from an auditing background, internal and external auditing, operational efficiencies, etc. even though I am an attorney also. But That's a dangerous uh, combination. It is. It is. <laughs> Being a CPA and an attorney, that it, they are uh, both uh, uh, very uh, dangerous. But because of that, you know, I think that way from the standpoint of efficiencies immediately and how can we make sure that the business processes are good and are operating effectively and are changed as the technology is changing. So I always have, you know, everyone in the room for my implementations. Just on yesterday, I had a team in my office and the programmer, I, I wanted to get an update, and the people from operations were talking about the things that the judges wanted. And, the pro and I asked the programmer, were you aware of that? And she said, well, I didn't have time to go to that meeting because if I'm in a meeting, I can't program as a whole did. If you're in a meeting, you can't ask them the questions that's necessary for you to make sure that you're programming properly so everyone's in the meeting. So our programmers have to understand they have to be right there in the meeting so that everyone understands, so that they know the why of their program. I like the way you communicate. Brandy, <laughs> <laughs> um, is that how you pronounce your name? Brandy, yeah. All right. So based on all the responses that you got, do you think you have something in mind that, as a citizen, you would like to see 
places where you feel there is leakage in terms of money not being spent as effectively and money not being saved, and you would like to see those items highlighted so that there is a focused attention where we can do a budget control and share that with the officials who could potentially make a difference. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a lot of uh, ways here. Uh, okay. There are uh, a lot of, uh, as a uh, person in the city, as a, uh, I work at Speak up, yeah. I'm sorry, so public speaking is not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, I guess money could go to a lot of different things. Um, as far as healthcare, as far as I, I personally have waited in line for hours and hours and hours and hours for um, different things where um, with my mom and uh, putting, getting uh, paperwork for our business, uh, it was a difficult thing. I feel like it could have been streamlined better um, if we were able to go online and do this out first, and then once we got downtown, we were able to get this speed line, hey, you fill this out online, you go here, you know. Um, I can see where there is an issue. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, that's okay. So if you think you, you've given one of the points, and I'm, I'm okay with that. See, the reason this was important is that, yes, there are a lot of people in this room who are very good in public speaking, and they have very good experience, but they do not come from the regular walks of life, and we want to impact those people. And that very simple example tells that there is a problem. Now, Phil, how does big data help that? Yeah, I was going to say, we're forgetting about the big data stuff, so um, I'm going to bring it back anyway. The other thing um, I am sure is the case, it's certainly true in every company, almost every company I've ever seen, I'm sure it's true in government departments, is you have a lot of legacy systems which are very expensive, proprietary expensive license systems. What you in this room may or may not be aware of is the, the massive move to open source technologies, the, 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 the tool set that's coming out of the big data space is, is pretty much all open source, very powerful, is a really good replacement for a lot of the legacy databases, uh, you know, the mainframes and Unix systems of the old days, are all being slowly replaced. And you see this in the stock price of these vendors, right? But it's, if, if you just look at the analyst reports on the traditional vendors, they're all under significant pressure because this is happening. I don't know how much of that's happening in government. How many, how many separate silos of data do you have in government on separate databases, separate licenses. You probably have millions and millions and millions of dollars, if your friend probably knows, yeah. um, of, uh, of separate licenses that can be consolidated, can be rolled up, and can be put on open source tools that came out of the big data movement. Some uh, can and some can't. Yeah. Um, we were utilizing the the open source tools coming out of the big data um, revolution, because it really is a revolution, and it's solving um, it's solving a lot of the, the siloed problems for us, but not not to replace them. Um, because what you what you shift from a capex problem becomes an opex problem, and I have as much trouble hiring the talent to manage the open source systems as I do maintaining the old siloed. Main, so we will be off the mainframe by the end of next year. The budget director will have my head. Just make that very clear. So the mainframe will go. Just very excited. Um, but for the sort of traditional um, licensed operating systems, there's there's issues with taking those to the open source systems, right? The monitors, the Hadoops, et cetera. So we use those in our big data predictive analytics programs. So as we build our large centralized data warehouse, as we build our, you know, our non-relational data, large databases, et cetera, to manage our millions of you know, terabytes to do our large data, our large predictive analytics program, that's where we go for the open source programs. For our traditional um, ERP systems, for our traditional 311 systems, those are not going to go open source. Um, it's not an effective management approach for me, and we have a strategy where when the market can do something better than we can, because I can't hire an army of 
of um, software engineering. <laughs> I can't maintain that talent. I can't source help. Microsoft can't source that talent, right? We've talked about that around Chicago. Um, they're better at it than I am. Um, and I'm just, Microsoft can't, IBM can't, Motorola can't. You guys all have trouble hiring that talent. I'm not saying anything. That's a secret. Um, and I can't because I can't match those salaries. So I can hire data engineers. I'm in a different boat there. I'm lucky. So while that, while the revolution around these solutions is fantastic for parts of my business, it is never going to supplant my um, proprietary databases and others. So what I'm doing there is investing in better contract management skills because the city has not been good at managing those relationships in the past and we have paid too much for licenses. So we're getting better at how we manage that footprint and how we <coughs> manage those implementations so that we do better at where we're managing cost systems because open source is never going to replace all of the applications <coughs> at least not for the foreseeable future of 30 to 40 years. It's just not feasible for the talent set and the user base that the city has. I don't know what else you see. I mean, if I may. Proceed. Yes, please. And by the way, this was Brenda Breen and um, well, Brendan, and this is something you should all know that you are being we are streaming this live on Seattle Talk Radio. So I wanted to wait a little before I told, so that people open up without thinking they are being heard. <laughs> okay. So anytime anyone gives a comment, please share your name and your company name, so that way people know what beautiful voice you have and what beautiful thoughts you have. Okay, go ahead. You want to start with me? So G yes. John Dadling. Um, just to add to what Brenna said, I mean, there's always a debate between open source and you know, license, package stuff from people, right? What we're seeing is that even in the uh, streams of big data or Hadoop or whatever you're looking at, they're booking, putting these packages into reference architectures and you know, controllable pieces so that everybody can use it. As Brenna said, there's a lack of talent in the street to actually do the analytics, to manage open source. I can't just take binary code from what Yahoo puts out in the open source and take that and use for me. I need something that is referenceable. My time to market has to be very short. I don't have the time to do that. So that's all already available. And the, the, the big debate is you have to always look at the total cost of ownership. You can't just say my capex is going to go down by 50% and take that money and spend the extra 75% in OPEX and the total cost remains the same. You, you, there are packages that are available for that specific purpose, uh, be it from any of the vendors that you see out there, whether it's IBM or NetApp or EMC or whoever. It's always there. So, uh, go ahead, do you have a question? What's your name? My name is Sabrina Fasco, and I'm from the Illinois Institute of Technology. So my question is, um, well, we know that you have um, only a limited amount of resources and students need projects because companies want them to have the experience. So how can we collaborate, all of us, to make this happen? Just call. Just call you. I, I will. I, I will. So, Laura, I'd like you to respond because this is not an easy uh, thing to get done and we have been attempting it for a little bit. What's the progress that you've seen? Well, one of the things that we've seen throughout the state is that um, folks who are not like Chicago are coming together. So you see the South Suburban mayors and managers linking together to bring the technology infrastructure to attract these types of possibilities. So they've got a nice strong broadband infrastructure. We see rural health net um, where they're connecting up the hospital so that they can share data throughout the state. Um, and that's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity for the private sector to help to develop um, platforms and strategies um, now that we have um, more broadband infrastructure throughout the state to be able to run a lot of these operations, run a lot of these operations. But those municipalities that are gathering together for their purchasing power, for their data power, they need your help. Um, they need um, use cases. They need the applications. Um, they can help the efficiency regionally. Um, Cook County has a, a huge opportunity to be in leadership with all of the municipalities that are here in terms of how um, to uh, see how we can centralize you know, the cloud, how we can do the data. Um, I, I see their CTO is here right now, and I know that this is all part of his strategy um, for, for the county. Um, but that's very, very critical, but just the way we talked about, we have to do it in partnership. Um, we have lots of academic partners here in this uh, state and in this region um, and if we're very strategic with those academic partners, 
um, leveraging the assets that the city does have and the county does have um, with all of the city agencies and all of the county agencies, and we continue to focus on interoperability, there's some possibilities. The Illinois State Framework Project is looking at interoperability across you know, seven major human and health services areas. They're having some progress, um, some barriers, but it's a fairly cost-efficient efficient way to look at interoperability. And we have to do that um, at every level of government, including supporting our smaller municipal governments who are very close to the various levels. We have a question? Maine? Yeah. yeah, my name is Jim Pegraro. I uh, work for a professional recruitment firm called the Noel Group. Um, my question, and Brennan, you touched on this a moment ago, but it all revolves around talent revolves around who you have in place to implement some of these changes. So I guess I have two questions. We've done a lot of work with clients in the public sector, not only in Chicago, but also in you know, across the country. And one of the things, you know, I guess the, the two-part question is first, how do you deal with some of the structural uh, issues or hurdles uh, with your current staff and current headcount with folks who you know, may or may not be capable of implementing some of these changes? And then second, how can organizations like mine help you to build a business case internally? Because I think the issue is there's the budget is there, it's just not being allocated. You well, know, or, or I should say, <laughs> well, in some cases, well, regardless, I, I think, how can we help you build a business case to attract that talent? Because if you're always 10, 20, 30% below market on the salary, it's gonna be difficult to attract that type of individual. We're about 60% below market for IT, like CSCI, uh, data engineering. So it's actually worse by, by our right. research, which is actually the challenge. So I, I, I call it my um, um, cheese pork kind of pitch, yeah. right? Yeah. Come work for Mayor Emanuel, come turn Chicago around, that's sort of the pitch that we go out there. But we have lots of, of um, good luck on the data engineering side because we are on the leading edge as far as predictive analytics goes. So I have data engineers lining up that I, that I can't hire to, so we have the room there in that program right now. We're not growing at the moment right there. Um, I don't have that luck on the, um, on the application side of the software engineering. I think, and so we're looking at some innovative things that certainly you know, we would welcome conversations from, from companies like yours that can help us build this. So one of the things that I've been talking with my CIO counterpart in the county, um, Leah Murray, about is, um, in, you know, to your question, is ways to build innovative internship programs, you know, which we have some hiring restrictions both in the county and the city side where we're working with our law department and our human resources departments to try and figure that out. So um, we can certainly use help in those areas um, where we can look at building some internship programs to bring resources into the city and the county. Um, also looking at ways of building shared services. So we're particularly strong on the city side in the data analytics side. The county is newer in that area. The county is extremely strong in the GIS side we are not as strong on the city side. So we're actually looking at um, making joint investments in areas of strength and creating um, centers of excellence where those strengths exist and making investments to grow in one area instead of trying to grow in two where we have the same exact same footprint. Um, so any help that you know, companies want to bring to the table to help us build those models is always welcome and frankly expanding that beyond Chicago hook to other areas makes perfect sense. Um, you know, we are building a, a data cloud in our data center that we are open to any government organization joining. So happy to have that conversation too. So anything that sort of mirrors that center of excellence shared services model, which saves all of, I mean, I'm a taxpayer and a resident too, and I'm a resident of the city and Cook County, and it's the exact same footprint almost, for God's sake. So anything that saves money and duplication makes sense. So we welcome these conversations, absolutely. Question for you, Dorothy. We spoke about a couple of areas of growth and then a couple of areas where we could <laughs> save a buck, right? How about talking about simplifying things? So you, you, you are trying to get a very complex government run, and the word complexity is what creates confusion, it creates leakage, it creates uh, you know, extra effort and, and money and sweat spent on getting something simpler done. If strategy is not strong, and I remember Lauren and I spoke last evening, this was a concern 
that if we will spend a lot of money on a very new, cool, and sexy technology like big data, and we will invest a lot of money in it, and we don't have a clear strategy, then, and we've not simplified them into actionable steps, then the word ROI, which is, you think, uh, running government like a business, you will never achieve an ROI which will not help you win trust, which will not get you further budget, so it's a spiraling down effect. So coming back and saying, how do we simplify our uh, objectives and give them something more actionable definition, and then start from there versus bottom up, if you have new technology in town, let's go. Well, I would say that you first have to begin with the end in mind. Know where you're going before you can get there. And so, um, and, and you can't, I, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of, you can't, you should not just be building uh, a new system for the sake of building a new system. You obviously have to know the why of the system and what exactly uh, you expect that system to do for you, what kind of improvements are going to be there, etc., and make sure that your planning process, I always say that planning is 80, 80 to 85% of the game. Implementation is the other 15%. So if you have a good plan in place, a good strategy in place, so that you know where you're going and why you're going there, then in the long run, you will have a system that is actually uh, 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 effective for what you're trying to achieve. And I did want to add something to uh, what Brenna was saying uh, to this gentleman about, he, because he wanted to know how do we push through things and as it relates to interns. We literally had to negotiate with our union, okay, during our union negotiations to ensure that we would be able to bring interns in. So it wasn't just simply, oh, just call me. Now I have that agreement. So that's why I said you can call me. So, but, but, but uh, um, you have to have the right strategy in place. All that you have to know. I have a niece and Elsa on the street right now. I could have just gone out to do a system. A uh, new case management system, but I just felt that it was important for us to have an analysis of what's going on, what what our system, uh, our current system is, what what what's the state of the technology out there, uh, and and what our needs are within the court system, be, and so that we would be able to put a good uh, RFP on the street, so that people then whatever you're going to bid on and, and implement for us will be what we really really. Need. Because you all know too many times, uh, we as elected officials or, or as officers, especially when, the, when you talk about the user uh, actually running or uh, being ahead of something, we don't always know what we need. And too many times we have to pull that RFP back. You guys are like, why did they not bid that one out? Why did they not make a decision? Well, you found out at the end of the day, it wasn't really what you need. So, so. The strategy is very important. Good. So, Phil, if I were to take, and this is an inventory of items which I spent all night coming up with, <laughs> but that's why you see the, the dark circles. Uh, community engagement, public transportation, housing education, permits for local businesses, fire inspection, maintenance and construction, and child welfare. If you were to take these and take Maybe, and is there any, any, any other that you feel is an area of growth? That's just a small group. Okay, so this, oh, so I still have dark circles just coming up with those. Exactly. So if you were to take, say, some of these and share the wisdom about how big data can bring an incremental improvement to take it to the next level based on where it is today. Well, and it's not just about the tools, right? It's the techniques and the thoughts. Agreed. So, so one of the things that kind of bothers me at the moment about the government not knowing at this stage, because I don't know a lot about it, but um, and it's true though in the private sector too, is the use of communities, communities to develop and share things. So look at just look at what's happened um, to um, I was say Keith, but look look what's happened to Linux taking over as an operating system. What 96 percent of web servers in the world are Linux. Why do they? Okay, the Apache Foundation for the web servers and the community developed Linux all as a community. They all build it together and they share it. City of Munich moved entirely, what, 300,000 people to, to Linux desktops. Spain is going the same way. So they all share in building one tool. So for a court system, right, 
you should really be part of a community where every court system in the whole US and maybe outside the US all collaborate and build and constantly build the best possible court management system. But you don't build it yourself, you don't pay for it yourself, you give your time free and in return you get it back free. So that those concepts of using commu the community, the power of the community to share, to build one, maybe you modify the touch here and there but you still share, those techniques are the way that the big data revolution has happened because Hadoop is entirely a reverse engineering by the community of techniques that came out of Google. Cassandra, high performance database, out of Facebook, a community effort. Microsoft, um, sorry, yeah, sorry Microsoft, we're in your building. MySQL came out of uh, a community. MariahDB now is, came out of a community. Cassandra came out of, uh, of uh, Facebook. Storm, and Storm came out, high speed real time analytics has come out of Twitter. They're all being developed by a community, not by a company, by a community of people around the world who volunteer their time or contribute professional time. And then they, you don't repeat it. Now, government seems to, for these systems that Sandra just mentioned, right, every single department is probably developing, just for their own city, one of those solutions. Then the next city down the road is doing it again, and again, and again. Now, how much? No, so, so maybe you're changing, but. Yeah, it is isn't how we're developing. But I think what you're missing around sort of the citizen centric vision, and, and I've worked outside of the US for more than a decade, and, and I'm familiar with the citizen centric vision and what happened in Australia and Canada and Belgium, is that's not taking root here because it doesn't actually fit the American ethos, which is a longer conversation. Is we don't, so what's going on with open data in Chicago and New York and in Nashville and Cleveland? is actually happening because the community in Chicago is demanding it of us, right? So one, we have a mayor who came into office when he was elected back in February and said, I'm gonna be transparent, I'm gonna be data-driven, and he hired the first CDO in the country and said, we're gonna put all government data online. It's not all there yet, we're getting there. There's more than 480 data sets now, but he, he said he was gonna do it, but at the same time, we have a community in Chicago that forces us to do it, right? We get calls on a regular basis from developers in the community, community members that are community activists that say, I need this data from this department and, and we're responsible for getting it out there and if we don't do it fast enough, we'll hear from them again and we have to work faster. And it, it's a poll on government resources, but it's important and the mayor expects me to do it and it's something he makes me report on on a regular basis. We don't have a poll from our constituents that I'm responsible to, to create a single view of the citizen. Now I have a poll from businesses for a single bill. They don't want to have to go to four different departments to pay for this permit and that license, etc. So we're working towards that. That's not easy for all sorts of both process and technical reasons. It's something the city needs to be better at, absolutely. I don't have a single constituency pulling on me saying, I want a single view of the citizen. I actually think that's important because I've seen how it works in other countries, but there isn't a constituency in the U.S. at the federal, state, or local level pulling for that. No, so I hear you, but, it's but not that's something about it. The other thing is you're developing software for your city. Uh, for any city in the country that wants it. But, and I'm in conversation with No, I know you want to share it, but how common is that? How in the U.S., just let alone other countries, how common is it that court management system or a driving license management system or whatever management system. I actually system don't is, is I don't know that it's common there. for I don't know that it's common in established business process areas because there are companies that are offering that software already in the marketplace. So why when why would I spend time building and where's awesome I'm gonna apologize if he's already talking he's not listening I'm gonna pick on awesome because I know him and I can do it. Why would I spend time um, developing an email system when I can license with Microsoft or Google, and I think the fact that I'm licensing to migrate to the um, to the cloud with Microsoft is well known, so I can talk about it, right? Why would I spend time developing an email system which is not core city business, right? I wouldn't be very good at that. I can pay Microsoft, who is an expert at email service, and we went through a selection process to decide on them versus Google, who are the only two competitors. Why would I do that when that doesn't solve a city problem, right? There's no value to the residents as long as I get the best deal and I beat the hell out of Austin, he'll tell you about it. I got the best deal that I could for the taxpayer dollars and I'm saving a couple million dollars a year having done it. 
I can't go out to the marketplace and source an analytics solution that will help me manage and mine the hundreds of millions of rows of spatial data that I have. I can't. Neither can any other city in the country right now. Right Now they could team with us several companies and build it, but it would cost them a lot of money. But nobody can actually go and buy that for a reasonable rate right now, so we're building it in collaboration with some companies and some foundations and some universities. We're doing it open source, it's available to anyone. We're in conversations with several foundations about where the library for that information is going to be. So that's not available and it solves core city problems. So it's the standard decision of, I know what my core business is. It's filling potholes, it's getting vaccines to residents who need it, it's getting child welfare services to children who need it, families that need it. It's not providing email service. That's Microsoft's core business or Google's core so for business. How much is So, well, then why there's another software company out there whose core business is providing court systems? Hers is running the court. Because you're paying for it. And then they open source. See, now this is what I call entertainment. <laughs> it's not bad to pay for something, and you pay for it either way. So don't think for a minute I'm not paying for the analytics system that I'm building. I promise you I'm paying for it. You pay for it one way or another. It's what's the best way and the cheapest way to pay for what you need. You pay for it one way or another. But, but, okay, but, but, what, 